Sup y'all, and welcome to Population Geography Part 3. In this video, we're going to look into how we explain why growth rates are different around the world. So, we'll investigate one of the most essential studies in analyzing birth and death rates across time and across the globe. And this is the Demographic Transition Model, the DTM. Early demographers used statistics primarily from churches in Great Britain and noticed that up to around the mid-1700s, birth rates and death rates were generally both very high. Great Britain, and every other region of the world, was in stage 1 of the DTM. And this is known as the high stationary stage, because there was very low population growth. On the graph, you can see birth rates generally higher than death rates over time. Now, while every country in the world at that time was in stage 1, no countries are in this stage today. There does exist pockets of regions that still are, in places that are war-torn, ravaged by starvation, or where hunting and gathering still exists, but they are relatively few and far between. Then, the Industrial Revolution began in Great Britain, bringing innovations such as the steam engine, which in turn led to factories, steamboats, locomotives, and connected people like never before. Other innovations led to a massive increase in food production. Other scientific advancements dramatically improved hygiene and living standards, starting in the United Kingdom. The first vaccine for smallpox became available in the 1790s. Sewer systems were improved considerably. And by the 1860s, Louis Pasteur discovered that boiling liquids made them much safer and prevented the spread of disease. This process of pasteurization helped bring about germ theory, the thought that we are made up of quadrillions of cells and that tiny microorganisms are what get you sick was a revolutionary realization that would lead to many other discoveries. One last innovation to mention are antiseptics, which are chemicals that kill microbes and prevent infection, first discovered by a surgeon named Joseph Lister. In fact, the eponymous product Listerine was named after him. These advancements, among others, reduced the diffusion of disease, concurrently reducing the rates of mortality. So, Great Britain was the first country to progress into stage 2 of the DTM, known as the early expanding stage, with high birth rates and declining death rates, leading to high rates of natural increase. As industrialization spread beyond the borders of Britain, other countries, first in Europe and the United States, witnessed similar demographic changes and this data has been corroborated with numbers from these countries. To understand how revolutionary the Industrial Revolution actually was, just look at how slow human population growth was over time, and then see how dramatically human population has expanded ever since. Looking at this growth, we refer to this as the J-curve, since the growth pattern resembles the letter J. Now, as the 20th century proceeded, the birth rates in Great Britain declined, as well as other places where industrialization took hold. This enabled Britain to enter stage 3 of the DTM, known as the late expanding stage. Declining birth rates with already lower death rates led to population growth, but at a more moderate pace. This is due to a plethora of reasons. First off, on a farm, children are more of an economic benefit, since they can work at a young age and begin earning their keep whereas children in a more urban environment became a financial drain. Also, societies were changing, and most people did not want to see so many children in factories and mills, so child labor laws were introduced that, among other things, prevented children younger than nine from working. Since infant and child mortality rates were dropping, having large families was not as necessary. In fact, it was quite the opposite. Urban centers grew substantially and became overcrowded, straining city and state resources. Birth control and family planning became more commonplace. Opportunities for women slowly became more pervasive, leading many to think more about careers and less about childbearing. In fact, there was even a group called the Malthusian League that promoted smaller families throughout Britain. Furthermore, due to more modern transport technology, millions of people emigrated from overpopulated cities and regions to other places and other countries, relieving some population pressure. Of note, between stages 2 and 3 signifies the actual transition, where a country transcends from developing to developed. 
And looking at how growth slows down as a region approaches its carrying capacity, or its ability to support a population through food and other resources, we call this the S-curve, due to its shape. Over time, Britain progressed into stage 4 of the DTM, called the low stationary stage, in which both birth and death rates are relatively low. Great Britain was obviously the first country to progress into this stage, and they did so by the 1970s. Through improved industrialization, women's rights, and increased use of contraception, countries like the United States, Canada, and France, among other developed countries, have entered and remained in stage 4. Furthermore, some countries have entered into stage 5 of the DTM, in which birth rates have fallen below death rates, leading to a rate of natural decrease and a declining total population. Countries like Japan and Italy have very low birth rates, and other countries like Albania and Cuba not only have low birth rates, but also greater numbers of emigrants leaving their territories. So let's finish off with another snide remark. Knowing the demographic transition model and understanding how and why countries progress through the different stages is of paramount importance in understanding our modern world. Countries like Brazil, India, and China have been rapidly advancing through the DTM, whereas many sub-Saharan African states have been seemingly stuck in stage 2 for decades. How future trends will progress depends on conditions at local, national, and global scales. That is correct. <laughs>